Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and today we have the best five announcements from today's Google I.O. 2016 keynote. And it was a pretty quiet keynote as far as like new physical product announcements go, but there was a lot of cool stuff also shown off, so we got plenty to talk about. Number five is Android N improvements. So the Android N beta dropped today, not the developer preview, now we're on to the beta. I have it installed on my Nexus 6P, and in theory you can drop this on your main device and not have to worry about any stability anymore. And uh, so far, so good. So there's some performance improvements with the Vulkan API and a new compiler. There's some security improvements as well and a couple of new features. Most of the stuff here we actually already saw with the developer preview when that first came out. And I did a whole video about the developer preview already. So I'll leave a link below the like button if you wanna check out all that's new with Android. But now we have a clear all apps button in the top of the multitasking tray. Uh, a bit of an improved multi-window support, and it'll also smartly remove apps from the multitasking carousel that you haven't used in a while. There is still no new name, uh, but they did open a website where you can now submit a suggestion for the name of the OS. Uh, I feel like they're just teasing us at this point. I'm pretty sure they already have a name in mind, and they're just going to wait till someone submits that name so they can say that they're taking our suggestion. Or maybe they're just messing with us. There's also Android Wear 2.0. It's not shockingly different, but it is much faster, and it'll also let you add complications from any app on any watch face. So your watch faces can be super custom now, and it will also run completely independently of your phone, which is awesome. Number four is the Google Assistant. So it's sort of like a, a next-gen enhancement to what we already know as Google Now. So Google Now already does a ton of stuff. It already has all these cards and gives you all this information before you even ask for it but it's also a really good voice search assistant. Essentially, Google has been working with machine learning and making this voice search part a lot better. So you can already go, okay, Google, who is the head coach of the Los Angeles Clippers? Doc Rivers is the head coach of Los Angeles Clippers. And then you can say, okay, Google, how tall is he? He is six feet, four inches tall. So it kind of uses the context of the previous question to know we're still talking about Doc Rivers. It's kind of conversational, and you're supposed to be able to use Google Voice Search as if you're just talking to another person in the room with you. You kind of already know what you're talking about, and you just flow the conversation. That's the idea, is they're trying to make this new Google Assistant even more conversational. The Assistant is built into an actual new physical product we saw today called Google Home. So it'll come out next year. It's this little white cone that you put in the corner of the room, and essentially it's a wireless speaker with all the voice recognition technology from Google. So you can ask it to play music, or cast to your TV via Chromecast, or you can just answer questions from, you know, what's in your calendar, what's in your email, or just Google anything that you would look up with Google Now. It just kind of becomes this hub of all the electronics in your home, or at least in that room. So it controls your thermostat, can control your lights, you know, whatever you want to hook up to it, it'll work. Some people have mixed feelings about, you know, a little white box in the corner of the room that seems to know everything about you and talk to you and answer your questions. Kind of seems to me like the future, though. I kind of like the idea. Kind of sort of reminds me of the computer from Star Trek. Number three is the two new Google messaging apps. Allo, or uh, Allo, Allo, Hello. and Duo. And these are going to use the new Google Assistant and all the machine learning. So Allo is the text messaging app. It has a bunch of new features. It has something called Whisper Shout. So Ahmed has typed yay and throws a smiley face in there. Now watch, rather than tapping the send button, he slides it down to whisper and slides it up again to shout. So that's pretty much like Facebook Messenger, but something really cool that it does do is called smart replies. Essentially, it'll start to predict what you might want to reply to someone's answer based on what was sent to you, whether it's a question or a picture, by analyzing that question or looking at that picture and then producing a list of a couple of canned replies that you might want to send back. So that seemed really cool, and they gave a couple of examples on stage. Might have been a little cringeworthy. I don't know if you see a picture of a piece of food and then you say, nice food. You know, it's just kind of looking at it and putting the name of what it saw in your reply message, but it's still really smart and shows a lot of what Google's been learning. I'm just picturing an entire conversation of just smart replies going back and forth. Smart reply, smart reply, smart reply. While well, you never actually say anything to each other. It's the future. You can also have a thread with the Google bot so you can actually ask it the same sort of questions you would actually ask Google now and get suggestions and answers stuff. Duo is the video chatting app. 
It's just video chatting, so it's encrypted from end to end. It's based on your phone number, like FaceTime. And it has this feature called Knock Knock, which is essentially, it lets you see the camera of the person who's trying to video call you live before you even pick up. So they can kind of like look into your phone and tease you into picking up the video call or something like that. This seemed really cool at first, like a fun, cute idea, but then also, perhaps a little bit creepy. You can see how that might go wrong like during an important business meeting, getting like a weird call and someone like trying to get you to pick up. So I imagine there's probably a way to turn this off. Anyway, those are the two new messaging apps you can get on your phone this summer alongside the messaging app you already have on your phone and alongside Hangouts, which will also continue to exist separately. So I guess my only question is, why couldn't they all be bundled into one app? Maybe they could have. I guess they kind of forgot about that whole unifying messaging experience thing they were working on a while ago. Oh well. Number two is Daydream. So this is virtual reality in Android. So you already know virtual reality. It's already on Facebook video and YouTube videos, 360 degree stuff, uh, Google Street View, stuff like that. Essentially starting with Android N, you will now have all the ingredients for VR built into the core of Android. There were some Android phones that could do VR before, but they were built into apps or built into the third party skin, like Samsung skin to fit in that headset that they did. That wasn't built into Android, that was built into the skin. Android N, it'll be built into the OS. And there's gonna be a certain spec that you need to meet starting next year in order to be considered a daydream ready phone. So that'll include, you know, certain grade sensors, certain SOCs to keep performance high and to keep latency to a minimum. I imagine certain resolution display, you want a good high enough resolution screen. And these Daydream Ready phones will work with their reference hardware. So Google is this fall coming out with their own VR headset that you can put Android phones in and its own remote control. And they did give us a little bit of a demo of that. And that's pretty much it. It looked really cool. Uh, obviously the VR game is evolving fast. That's pretty much all we know at this point, but it is a lot of exciting stuff. And number one, last but not least, is instant apps. I think this was my favorite thing of all of Google I.O. It kind of came as a surprise, but it's the ability to open apps that you don't even have installed on your phone instantly. b &H Photo and Video has a beautiful Android app, but I don't have it on my phone because I don't shop for cameras every day. Now, if I'm searching for something specific, like a camera bag, I can still get that same experience. With one tap, the app opens up right to the bag I want to buy. Technically, this is a deep link to the Android activity B&H wrote to display this product page. And that's all Google Play needed to download. I can also swipe here and see more details about the bag. Now, when I add it to my cart, the animation there, it was pretty slick. And at checkout time, Android Pay works, just like if I had the app installed. I don't have to pull up my credit card or type in my name and address. With Android Instant Apps, I'm already signed in and I'm ready to pay. So that's pretty awesome. That's kind of, like I said, it's legit. It's building just the parts of the app that you need in front of you, downloading just the parts that it needs to show what you wanna do on the app. And then as soon as you're gone, you're gone. It's like you never had to install the app in the first place. It's kind of like taking the mobile web to the next level. I feel like this could be awesome. There's already plenty of sites that have a website and an app but the app is way better, so you just wish everyone could use the app, but not everyone wants to go to the Play Store and download something and then install it and then start to use it. If you could just use the web app experience to a high quality every single time, that's just basically what this does, instant apps. I love it. So there you have it. That's pretty much everything you need to know from the Google I.O. 2016 keynote. Feel free to share this video for anyone who you feel might find this information useful. Major takeaways from this, I would say, are one, VR is everywhere. Uh, messaging apps are kind of also everywhere. Uh, machine learning is incredible. And Google is kind of basically Skynet at this point in like the best possible way. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.